That doesn't make sense. That does okay, let's normalize for color. Okay, yeah. Wait, there aren't that also doesn't make sense. Where are the games from this year? Um Date last month. Not a lot of data points. Color white. All right, that makes sense. I was very confused because I had recently deployed a version of Stockfish that did probably lose a few rating points um, as like I'm moving the universe around a few eggshells may crack. Um, so yeah, uh, Godel here is meant to be the bot that I use for testing crazy ideas or just testing things I'm really interested in. Um, so yeah, here we see that um, the bot has in fact regressed on this site with the latest options. Uh, that's really not the reason I summoned this stream today. Uh, this stream we're going to start with a code patch that I've already coded. So, um, well, this is not a good way to demonstrate it, so I'm already off on the wrong foot. So let me properly demonstrate this. Uh, and to do that, I will need to get my SSH thing set up and casting here. All right, let's do that. There we go. Actually, let me check one other thing. I have browser crop set here. I don't want my browser crop set for Woogles if I'm not using Woogles. Uh, I'm not using 81 Dojo or Shogi Wars at the moment either. So let's use, um, let's rename this GitHub or Leeches or Lee Shogi is the name of this browser crop. But okay, yeah, let me cast my entire screen now. Um, ghosts can see Chuck Norris. Alright, so the recently there was this interesting position. Um, this is the position. Hang on. So to see this position, we run Stockfish. Set option UCI variant. That's not right. Set option main UCI variant. Value crazy house. Uh, position. Then there's the position. D prints out a diagram of the position. Uh, alternately, instead of typing this, you can go to the analysis board, crazy house. You can even type it right into the URL or just drop it straight in here. Hit tab, there's your position. This position uh, recently, well, a lot of surprises happened here. Um, so, first of all, uh, it, there was a recent game where Le uh, where... Let me summon the game. I'm never prepared as I want to be. That's because um, this is all unpaid work anyway. Uh, view the games. Alright, so we had a recent Crazy House game. Was this it? Where'd my position go? I don't think this is it. This couldn't have been it, because this... Was this one it? How do I get the game that had this position in it? What was it that really triggered me about this? Um, there was a recent position where it was playing white, I believe. Or... 
I don't remember the story anymore. This is terrible. I should have taken better notes. Um, couldn't have been this, right? Yeah, this can't be it. It was playing white. And it had a useful move, and it picked something else. And I'm beating myself up over not being able to find the game in question. It's super annoying, because this was such a good test position. It was so excellent. Maybe I bookmarked it. Was this it? I don't remember. The move counter is six, so I need to look at the position. Yeah, here. Here it is. Did I bookmark this? I do not recall. This little star here does not actually indicate whether or not I've already bookmarked it. But this is the game 12 hours ago. Let me look in the player's game history 12 hours ago for this game. And see... Oh, this won't tell me if I bookmarked it either. I have to look inside. This also doesn't show, like, bookmarked games. I actually see the bookmarks. I have to go over to my profile. There we are, 1,721 bookmarks. These are the best games of Lee Chess. I should publish this somewhere. Why have I not published this? Well, because I have no way to publish it. Um, but okay. I've not bookmarked this yet. Let's bookmark it. I'm sorry, it's the TV page where this doesn't work. The game page, you're able to see the bookmark here, but if you're just looking at a player TV, and you check the bookmark, and then you go into game analysis, it doesn't show that it's checked anymore. Anyway, this was the position of interest. How many tabs do I have open? Okay, I've got some reasonable number of tabs open here. Um, so surprises abounded here as I was testing this, both with several permutations or changes to the um, evaluation function and trying to use and not use the neural network weights and trying a wide variety of things. Um, we see pawn at e6 was the engine's move in this game as it was trying to use the neural network weights. We see without any neural network weights, uh, the move knight c3 is recommended. And then when I put in a code change, uh, we'll take a look at the code change in a second. This was the recommended move. Let's go back. So we have the engine switched off right now. If I switch it on, okay. it. There we go. So this is the problem. So pawn at e3 is recommended, knight to c3 is recommended. Um, but the move knight takes f7, which actually looks murderous, um, doesn't appear in the top two. So yeah, this was surprising to me that um, here we got to move with a high evaluation, here we got to move with a decent evaluation, but if you actually play knight f7... Uh, at first, Stockfish is like, no, this is bad. And then it jumps up to three points. So, like, this is potentially a very strong move here. And can only get stronger, because, I mean, just look at it. So, when I put the code patch in place on my local machine, this eval jumped, uh, or rather, Knight takes F7 was the recommended move. And whether or not it mates, um, I mean, it doesn't mate, but, like, goodness, this has to be right, no? And if we do king takes, the eval jumps and spikes to five, and then down to two, and then up to four. Like, this is swinging all over the place. This is indicative that something interesting is going on here, and Stockfish is having a very difficult time evaluating it. Um, so I've since put a more recent version with my latest patch up on, uh, Lee Chess here. 
And nobody's going to challenge this thing to Crazy House, but if somebody were to, we could, or rather if a bot were to challenge it, we could see just how good or bad the patch is without any other changes. But, um, two other pieces of news. Um, so the this site, unfortunately, which I let all of you all know about the other day, is under a denial of service attack. Um, so, yeah, uh, now to access the site, you've got to get whitelisted by, uh, the site owner, which is terribly sad. Um, so I've kept the commands NNUE and Fairy, um, which will both direct you to the Discord so you can talk with that site owner, but unless you get whitelisted, your machine is not going to be able to connect to this cluster, and you aren't going to be able to connect your browser to this website anymore. Um, I've tried to set up a proxy server. I've struggled with that. I don't know if I can figure that out or not. Um, but while I still wrestle with that, um, I can still uh, submit things, and what I should do even though there's this huge backlog of tests and only two CPUs, only two CPU cores running, I can still submit my patch. That's not it. My patch is this branch, Crazy House Phase, No Neural Network, to compete against No Neural Network. Um, so if we look at the commit history, we can get the standard chess benchmark number that we have to compare. The number of nodes that get executed every time standard chess uh, positions are tested. Oh, wait, that's not it. Uh, I wanted to invoke just this commit. And this doesn't have any functional change, so we want to go to the parent. Um, also no functional, ch there we are, Let's enable, wait, no, this is variant specific, this is GitHub specific, this, uh, also variant specific, um, okay, screw it, we need to go to the list of commits, here we are, and pick out the one where I merge from upstream, and then this merge, uh, actually doesn't contain the commit message that I need. The message I need is the previous commit here, which has bench colon, and then the number of nodes that need to be executed in a standard benchmark run, which I think ends in 930, okay, well, 9336. Uh, my scroll wheel accidentally zoomed the page, there we go. I'm calling this a bug fix or simplification. Um, because it honestly does help with solving that particular position, and I'm quite optimistic that I really want this change. You're not supposed to develop things that way, but um, this... Oh, the code change, right. Uh, I need to show you what the change is. Uh, so that's why we came over here. So if I type eval, now we can see... Uh, the materi material evaluation for this position, we'll put that back up on the here. We see that um, the imbalance on the board is that white has one fewer knight, and black has one, two fewer pawns here on the board. So if you're completely ignoring material in hand, the material imbalance is just one point. Uh, actually in black's favor, because white sacrificed a knight for two pawns. So, uh, here's the material evaluation. Um, and it evaluates as, like, about more than half a pawn in black's favor in terms of what's on the board if you were to take stuff out of white's hand and black's hand. Uh, down here is the evaluation term for the variant, which is Crazy House. And because there's material in hand, um, 
white gets one point um, for having two pawns in hand, and black doesn't get as much. Uh, yeah, here's the white evaluation term. Here's the black evaluation term of zero. That's not right. There should be a knight in black's hand, unless I've missed something. How could I have missed that? Huh. That's not correct. Alright, so I just put... Um, well, Godel's running this version. It's probably still an improvement, but that's not right. We need to indicate that black has a knight here. Um, well, let's take a look at the code change then. Man, I thought I had this all sorted out. Yeah, so evaluate.cpp as function variant down here, which, oh, git check out. Uh, what the heck did I call this? Crazy house phase for game phase. Wait. Is that just the neural network? Wait, was I testing the wrong thing here just a second ago? Um, what's in my build script again? This is what I get for not doing everything all at once, but allowing some gap between when I actually coded and when I'm starting to test things. Uh, Alright, we're going to simplify some of the build script cut out all the variants, or some of the variants that we don't need. So there we go. That accidentally completed twice. Let's build this with just the variants that are used on Leech Us. Uh, while that builds, we can still continue submitting the patch to the cluster. This is a standard type of patch. Um, nothing fancy about it. Our commit message is somewhere here. Crazy house phase. Enable the game. Can I? It doesn't allow me to select text on that view very easily because all the text that I want to select is in a link. Uh, enable crazy house game phase scaling. Uh, what that means is that as pieces drop off the board, actually factor that into evaluation of the position on the board. So if all the pieces are in hand or just not on the board, um, the, the evaluation will differ much more um, from a position where all the pieces are on the board, which uh, actually harkens back to something that I thought about years ago and thought was just not doable. Um, we'll take a look. But here we are. This is the branch name. This is the branch to compare to name. Uh, I'm calling this a bug fix because it is. Um, all right, this is built. So let me do my demonstration again. Uh, test out Ben. All right. Um, here's our position. Stockfish. Set option name MCI variant value crazy house position Ben this Ben string. Uh, D dumps out the board to verify that we entered in the fen correct. Eval shows here's the evaluation. Again, there's the white pawns in hand. Black should have a knight in hand. It's not counting. That's not right. Um, so the patch is going to fail. Uh, also, probably means that anybody has some chance against Sockfish until I get this fixed. But this is going to be fixed very soon. So. Uh, 
Um, yeah, let's put the negation operator back in place there. And position.h has the other part of my change in hand. Um, yeah, here we are. Here's the evaluation. So we take piece type iterating between pawn and queen. Count the number of pieces for the player. Um, Of that given type and add that into the score. That looks right. How could I have messed this up? Um, PSQ score in hand. Yeah, that looks right. What's the other part of this change? Uh, it's the consumer here that says if we're playing crazy house, go evaluate for us the value of the pieces that are in the player's hand. That looks right. And here's where we're consuming this, saying subtract the black score from the white score. Um... Oh, let's see, psqt.cpp, oh, well we don't need this silly thing in this array anymore, but what's the value of score here? It's the value of a piece given the game phase. Okay. Yeah, fine. I can leave this be. Um, why would this not work? How, where did my knight go? All right, uh, we could try something more drastic. That's so weird. Let's try um, okay. Score in hand. <sighs> Instead of saying make piece based on our color, just get the piece value for the white piece. Is there any other thing in hand bonus? What is this in hand bonus? Is this just a bonus that's given? Oh. Okay. So, yeah, based on whether this is a no piece, pawn, knight, bishop, queen. For those types, um, hmm. there's a bonus, and so it's very useful to have a pawn in hand. It's worth half a pawn to have the pawn in hand. Um, actually, what this should do, yeah, this really should represent not just the bonus for having the piece in hand, but also the value of the piece in hand should be part of that array. So that we're not having to recompute that sum over and over. But that's, we're storing it here. That's fine. Um, hmm. So the next crazy thing we can do is um, manually set the value of a knight somewhere or assert some condition here. Just verify that our line of code gets triggered at all. 
So count the number of pieces in hand for us of piece type. Do I have this written correctly? Color piece type, color piece type. But for my own... Oh. I was going to say for my own sanity I should simplify this and just call count in hand instead, but um, the template parameters make that a bit unwieldy to do. Um, okay. It's the thing I wanted to try asserting. Assert uh, us is equal to white. So just verify that every time this function's invoked, the value of us is equal to white. If this succeeds, if this does not trigger the assert, there's a problem. That assertion needs to be called because we should be evaluating uh, the position from both players' perspectives in terms of what they have in hand. <sighs> Coding's never easy. It's still amazing that in spite of that ridiculous behavior that we're seeing now... Um, oh. Maybe the problem isn't with... Um, with this. Okay, well, there is a problem. No, I'm sorry. We've not proven that. Um, okay, let's test position using... Yeah, classical evaluation. Sure, why not? Um, it should trigger the assert. And it does. Um... All right, so what else? Oh, yes, I was thinking the problem here might be not with any of the code, not with any of the, what I'm trying to test, but possibly just the uh, logging code itself might be broken. Let's take a look. Let's see if T trace add variant us score. All right. Let's see. What is score initially assigned to? Is there an okay? There is an initial assignment. A uh, score is zero. Fair enough. Um, let's try assert us is equal to white over here. Verify that that gets triggered in evaluate that CP. And um, it does. Right, that CPP line 1662 does get triggered. So, um, the next thing to test is assert a score is not equal to score zero. And, well, we're not going to see that get triggered because all of our, our other assert gets triggered. So, we need to rebuild position.h. But yeah, because white has two pawns and black has one knight in hand, at least I think black has a knight in hand, um, this should count as um, uh, the material favoring black, just based on a glance.
All right, so here we see score not equal to score zero failed and evaluate.cpp. Uh, so f print f standard error. We're going to print out the position itself on its own line. Let's get the forsyth Edwards notation string. Dump it as a C style string. And this will verify that we have the right position. And there's our position that we dumped. And if I drop that position into an analysis board, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if I drop that into an analysis board for Crazy House. Oh, white has one pawn in hand, black has nothing in hand yet. Alright. My mistake. Um, I need to put that into the input. So, test out then. I'm not testing the right position. Moves, um... G5, F7, E8, F7. Let's try that test. There we go. Um, yeah, I was freaking out there. So, if I just run this engine... Uh, set option name UCI variant value crazy house position when this thing there's our position eval shows that now the variant term this is what I was trying to demonstrate earlier two white pawns in hand uh, one black knight in hand so that is no longer deducted out of material. Material still counts what's on the board the same way you would standard chess, but kept entirely separate is evaluation of material in hand. And what this means is that other things like king danger, etc., can be calculated as they normally would, and then these bonuses get applied later. Um, so this is a simplification of some otherwise really complicated code that didn't need to be so complicated it was caused by me being overly clever when I was coding in it last time um, so yeah I can submit this and after it gets accepted we could see whether or not this patch fails um, or, oh gosh really uh, let's try that again. Crazy House Phase is the name of the thing. No neural network. Did I push that? Yeah, that's on GitHub. Should be on GitHub. Alright, test signature. Uh, do, do, do. Alright, so... Here's my bench number, base signature, base branch, no neural network, um, crazy house simplification, there we go, Get log shows, enable crazy house game phase scaling, boom. Okay, that is submitted now, and if I could click the link... Oh, that's my machine. Never mind. What I'm trying to click is my username. Um, the letter is DD here. There we are. To filter this list, just looking for my own patches. There's my patch. Here's the diff, which is the same on GitHub as it is on my machine. I was starting to show this earlier, and I realized this was not a convincing demonstration as just executing the code and showing you, hey, 
here's this evaluation term which explains like there's two pawns and a knight in hand. Uh, this is now part of the variant uh, section of the evaluation. Um, that said, this is still pretty grotesque. Um, so what I should do now Uh, let's see. Where is this? Uh, where is this piece square table dimension defined? Right there. Yeah, a piece being in hand no longer counts as being. Yeah, whatever. Um, so we want the in hand bonus here. Let's see. Um, whoops, this is the term I'm meaning to search for. So, times not this, but the in hand bonus of whatever, and whatever here is going to be piece type. Um, Plus, um, the piece value. So you have the piece square table referenced here somewhere. Where's my initialization code again? Okay, here. Make score. There we go. So this is hideous, but... Um, it works. And we can look into simplifying this later. Uh, oh, do we actually need the fully qualified piece here? Yuck. Okay. Do I ever iterate through it? No, no, not here. Um, fine. We can iterate through a piece list. That's okay instead of iterating through piece type um, type of PC hang on nope uh, this is piece type PT equals type of PC. Alright, so this is the most verbose way we could ever write our code. Um, but it's correct, and that the correctness is what matters. Um, Alright, is it really so unwieldy to call count in hand anymore? Count in hand accepts a templated piece type, uh, which is still a bother here because this PC here is not a templated thing. All right, so. Now we're doing this for the benefit of evaluate.cpp. Um, which has this piece square in hand, which needs to be evaluated as a score data type. This, okay. Um, and if I take another look at piece square down here, this is initialized based on, oh, a piece has different values in the middle game and the end game. Okay, 
That's what I was wondering. So, yeah, this is a, a little bit ugly, to say the least. Um, all right, given that I've made all these code changes, does any of this still build? Nope. All right. Um, in hand bonus not declared. That's what I was concerned about. So is PSQ? Wait, in hand bonus a piece type. It's right there. Um. Hmm. How is it that PSQ is available in scope, but um, no, it's not, is it? Because like each time uh, a piece moves, um, there's references to this PSQ variable. Oh, PSQT is the scope designator. All right. Um, so I need to scope in hand bonus here. Piece value is already in global scope. So this is the most verbose way to write some of this code. Oh wait, no? Are you sure? Is the compiler lying to me? It shouldn't. But like, here's the forward declaration for PSQ. Um, it doesn't appear to be... Oh. Is there a psqt.h that I just don't know about? No. Okay, so here's where the namespace begins. Here's where the namespace ends. And is psq declared anywhere in that namespace? I don't think so. So, how is it added to the namespace? How is this thing here visible in some other namespace, but this variable down here is not? Is the const expr breaking this? Do I have to remove const expr for this to be available? I sh no, that's not how any of this works. But this is not even declared in the scope of... Like, there's our namespace beginning. It contains a member bonus. It contains other things, right? I thought so. That's a big array. That is one big ol' array. I'm just trying to write this accurately the first time around, and then I could come back and code golf it later. Um, Jesus, array never ends. All right, and then there's pawn bonus in scope of this. Pawn bonus ends here. And then I added my own little bonus for pieces in hand. Um, I'm guessing I just spelled it wrong. So we're going to copy that into our copy buffer. Because um, I don't understand how I could have, how this could not be available. All 
All right, so this is now in our copy buffer. So if I type in one colon in capital P, in hand bonu, did I really do that? No, this is in hand bonus. I don't know how I messed that up, but let's try that again. Now I've got it in my Windows copy buffer. Yeah, it's right there. Oh wait, PSQ is a local member. Um, but yeah, here we're accessing a thing that's in that namespace. Do I just have to rebuild the world? Is that what's going on here? <sighs> that doesn't make sense. Oh. Forward declaration. Okay, that's why this is all screwy. All right. Yeah, that's it. All right, so I need to take the declaration out of the other file and forward declare it uh, in position.h. So... Thank goodness for random searches, but yeah. X turn, score, etc. There we go. That's what I was confused about. Much better. All right, so yeah, I'm in the process of slowly simplifying and code golfing all this stuff. So the next developer, who's me? won't struggle so badly with this the next time around. All right, unused variable in hand bonus. Really? Wait, oh, is that so? Is this? Hmm. Const expert score bonus. For this to be external, externable, do I have to remove the const expert qualifier? Yes. Um. Do I have to have to remove that, or did just this just recompiling that fix this? Okay. So yeah, this can't have const expert. Uh, can I have const there? Because I'm not changing the value of this. No. So for this to be something that I can put into another file like that, it has to be like this. Now this has nothing with a p nothing to do with the piece square table anyway. This no longer belongs in this file. So I could move it out of this file altogether. Um, but we'll leave it here for now. Um, also because there's a sixth. Uh, there's some variants where there you can have a king in hand. We're going to need to put that zero at the end of this array. Wait, piece type NB. What's the value of piece type NB? Eight. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, still built, right? Yes. 
All right, get add position dot h p score table dot cpp status um so this is inefficient the way i just coded things so now that i have something well i've not proven that it works yet i got output having outputs better than not having output but um let's do a little test here set option name uci variant value crazy house position then this position diagram debug whatever d stands for there's our position eval print out the entire eval function and we see yes uh black still has a knight in hand and so just based on having material dominance on the board and material dominance in hand uh black is to be favored as long as you don't look at the rest of the position uh, so this heavily favors black until you start actually looking at variations so this bar there's not a regression yet um but yeah i'm not content with um a lot of things here. So here's the in-hand bonus. So here we got in-hand bonus, and then we got make score. We're doing this a zillion times, and probably don't need to do it that many times. Um, make score creates the value of a piece. Um, Yeah, we should just create another something, but normalize it slightly different than I did the first time around. Uh, so instead of calling this PSQ, uh, we'll call this P hand. But we don't need this whole variant array thing, do we? No, we don't need the variant array. We don't need a number of squares because this is not a square. We just have the piece. Um, and so it dawns on me. What I'm doing right now, I'm doing the hard way. I should start over. Um, yes. Okay, my proof of concept works, but um, but uh, we can do this. We can code this in a better way. All right. Um, so let's start from the end this time work our way back into the solution. So instead of augmenting this existing array, and instead of have it, well, yeah, let's still have P hand with variant number, um, which we'll, we'll go, uh, we'll code golf that in a minute. But yeah, this is going to be more satisfactory when it's done more satisfying when it's done. Um, likewise, over here, instead of having this data member, this is what it's going to be declared as is P hand, instead of PSQT. Um, there we go. So we're not increasing the dimensions of every array to count for this uh, off-the-board square. There is not going to be a concept of an off-the-board square anymore, because that just doesn't make sense. But also, there's it's just extremely grotesque. So, yeah, 
instead of this, it's going to be P hand and P hand and what have I missed? Um, we're going to simplify some of this code as well. So why do in multiple lines of code what we can do in a single line of code with a nested assignment and without the braces? There we go. Um, now this is still more than we need um, because the value of a piece in hand is the same for both colors. We don't need this whole piece construct. We just need a piece type. Um, so there we go. There's our type of piece. I don't think we evaluate that anywhere else. Oh, we do. Whatever. There will be some redundancy in our code. We'll live. Uh... So declare this with piece type NB. Now I was mentioning still that there are some variants where you can have a king in hand. And so that should have a zero value instead of an undefined value. Um, I think that's it. So that's it for this file. Then go back to position.h to where we added this member. We're going to reduce its bound there. Um, okay, and then we need PSQ score in hand. It's no longer going to do this square none thing. There is no square none in a chessboard that's like null. We don't want a thing that's like null. So P hand. There we go. Um, except now we no longer need to construct this other piece object because we have the piece type already. That's better. It's identical to what we coded earlier, but fewer keystrokes, less memory, yeah. Yep, crazy house coding. It's just madness. Um, let's see. I think this is fine. Wait, okay, yeah, and the color us is necessary here because we still need to count the pieces for the correct player. We're still iterating through piece types here, not pieces. Um, get status, get and start at H, start at CVP. Build it. Does it build? If it builds, does it run? If it runs, well, we need to check that it produces sane results. And so far, that's just a manual me executing that, typing in like the variants, crazy house, etc. Uh, oh, does not compile. That's pretty common. All right, p square 834. Yeah, the fact that we're assigning the value of p hand um, means that we are not uh, using the board anymore. The piece is in the player's hand, literally. So we're an hour into... I thought I would just quickly show this off and I, we'd pivot to gaming, but we're back at coding. Isn't that fun? All right, so here's our test position in question. Um... Pawn at e6 is a killer for pawn advantage. Um, let's see. 
set option name UCI underscore variant value crazy house position then this position diagram or debug uh, eval and eval shows plus two pawns for white plus a knight for black total eval is minus four so this is the same code uh, this function is the same as my previous patch but uses fewer keystrokes and is less likely to break other things so, yeah, let's go with this version. Git commit command. Push F. Actually, wait. Git branch delete crazy house phase no neural network. Git check out a new branch with the same name. Git rebase no neural network. Git restore, make file, rebase for real, git push force, um, crazy house phase and crazy house phase without neural network, push it, it's now on github so um, it's functionally equivalent to the thing I just submitted to the cluster but fewer keystrokes again. So, Point is earlier, yeah, the result of coding when you're done is something you're proud of. Coding sucks. <laughs> coding is work. It's like writing. It's like any other kind of exercise. It uh, Sometimes it can be entertaining for its own sake, but uh, yeah, you probably missed my explanation earlier, but... Recently, there was this fantastic test position. Um, yeah, here we are. So, another bot had challenged my bot to a game. And my bot played pawn at e6, which sucks. And, um, or at least it's evaluating as negative here. So, this is the played move. Uh, knight c3 is the move recommended by Stockfish 12. But if you actually play knight takes f7, white's just winning. So both my bot and Stockfish 12 uh, completely missed this move. Which is just hilarious because this occurs to you and me as like, hey, I'd like to try that. Maybe you wouldn't think it's winning, but you at least look at it. Uh, yeah, so, um, get, res oh wait, make it clean, let's deploy, go to again, is it in the middle of a game? It is. What better time to deploy a bot than while it's playing a game? All right. We'll just stick this atop the upper right corner of the board. You never need that part of the board anyway. Because either it just can if the board is rotated, that's usually the black king in the upper right, and you know where it is. Uh, and in this position, well, actually, white's king ended up there. That's pretty funny, but usually there's nothing going on in this corner. Um, anyway, I'm deploying this experimental thing to my bot to take effect soon. But this could be fixing a years old bug um, that could have been plaguing this for a very long time. We'll see. And so it's 
uploading the file and restarting the engine. And there we go. It's got the new version in place. Um, so yeah, it's got all my latest crazy house stuff up in the cloud. We looked at this already. We looked at this. Uh, let's see, is there any notifications? Update evaluate.cpp. It's not tied to a branch. Fine. Add ELO worth. Oh, so we'll get back to this. Um, I have opinions. That's a separate thing. I'm just trying to dismiss everything we don't need right now. Oh, so we started here. So as uh, my bot plays more and more games, we get to see um, filtered by whatever filters you choose to apply. Uh, whether or not it's improving or worsening at given variance. So if I wanted to say three check, it just played a three check game. Uh, <laughs> let's unfilter by color. Okay, so yeah, not enough data points to really draw a conclusion in the last month. If we say last two months, maybe we have more. We don't really have a lot of data points. Not many people challenge uh, the spot to variance rated games so it's hard to tell but also people challenging it's not helping collect a lot of data um it'd really have to be bots challenging this bot for you to be able to see a difference um all right so this patch is submitted um the way i coded this is inefficient let's resubmit this. All right, new submission, crazy house. Uh, well, there's no autocomplete. I'm sad. So the branch in question, phase, no neural network, competing against no neural network. Uh, we'll take a look at my build script. Comment out the test just so I can get. Okay, here's the expected number of nodes searched for standard chess. And description is enable game. The uh, game phase scaling. And it's really what it does. Oh, I never got back to my original point. Also, sorry, I, I moved my microphone too close. It's on my keyboard. I am typing right into your ear. I forgot that OBS fixed some settings. I am very sorry about that. Uh, I moved my mic, but it's much too late now. This video will not turn out. Um, sorry about that. So, yeah. Um, it's a lot simpler now. Um, this is a bit more expensive to call because we're having to, oh, oops, wait, no, this is right, this is right, the P hand is still equal to the value of a piece plus the in hand bonus from having the piece, so that's still correct. Um. Yes, yeah, so is there anything more expensive about this, or is this actually just better? This is just a... no. This is not better in one sense. Uh, this is the inefficient part of the code change. The fact that this has to be recomputed every time an evaluation is done. We are going through one for loop, indexing into one array and another array, but this is all a bunch of constants. Um, okay, well, this could have been coded better if I were actually paying it any attention whatsoever. Um, yeah. Like, okay. 
I have this variant member of the array, and yet I'm always passing a constant as the parameter when we do the lookup. Really smart, Dan. Really smart. Right. Uh, let's code golf this further. Um, so over here, is loop a very no loop is a subvariant. All our main variants here only contain its placement a variant. Placement's a subvariant. Where's placement? Yeah. So all the crazy house alike games are considered not their own independent variants, but rely on the valuation that is used for crazy house. Therefore, we don't need this array member either. We can compact this. Um, we can compact all this. Everything I try to do to be clever and optimize on performance has bitten me in the ass. So let's um, learn something from it, I guess. <laughs> All right, um, and then when we do the lookup over here, yep. Um, so there is one slight performance hit, and that we are still doing this indexing into this uh, piece count in hand many 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 times per second that really can't be helped here um but the good news um there is good news here somewhere right not really uh oh i'm sorry uh i'm just really really flustered over Spinning my wheels so long on this. Hang on. So I did a force commit here. Or I did a, a amend my commit. I didn't retest this. I need to retest it. Before I push it up to the cloud. The cloud will retest it all anyway, but... So yeah, we don't need this index. We don't need p hand to have this extra dimension. Um, super exciting stuff. Uh, okay. My bot's still available to play. You know what? Maybe at the end of this we celebrate by playing against my bot. And if I coded it right, it will just kill me. Um... So, okay, that's cool. That is really cool. It's just what we needed at a time like this. All right, so how did I mess this up? Let's recompile. Also, increase our number of parallel jobs from three to six, so this completes faster. Though not by much faster. Come on. What else have I not shown yet? Well, we've looked at this code diff. We've seen that I've submitted this again. It'll take a while for that to get approved, but we don't have computation power to run this anyway. Yeah, just recompiling the code was all that was required here. Um, 
And I'm going to, instead of re-manually doing all those steps, uh, we're going to take a shortcut here. Just say print out the evaluation. If that evaluates like minus four. Oh! Oh my god. All right, that's a thousand times faster than me just typing that all manually. Yeah, we still get the full complement of everything we wanted printed out. We didn't get the diagram, but we did get the right evaluation and full accounting of how that evaluation was produced. I'm smart. Um, all my neural network stuff is missing here, but we didn't need that. Actually, no, it's missing on purpose because we're doing classical evaluation. Um, all right, git push f, wait, git branch, delete, git checkout, uh, new branch, git restore make file, um, make clean, git rebase no neural network git push force and that's the most efficient version of this and then we're going to push my code changes back up to this so it's not going to get approved anytime soon let's dismiss that and get check out crazy house phase deploy the new engine that isn't using a ton more memory than required and then we'll get to celebrate by having this bot absolutely deck me in Crazy House. Because it's not even going to be a fair fight. Uh, yeah, now I remember the one other thing I wanted to show. Uh, so let's go back and find it. Where's my stockfish? Here we are. Over here, we had an issue for Crazy House Game Phase. We had some interesting feedback from Unihedron forever ago. And, uh... Okay. Maybe if we search for the word Shogi, we'll find it. Consider what Game Phase means in Crazy House. So Crazy House and sh uh, Shogi are very different. It's something we've learned over the last year. Um, but this is a beautiful explanation that Unihedron copied from Wikipedia. But it's still... Wait, from Wikipedia? No, from Shogi Shack. My mistake. Uh, let me zoom in. This is just a very good explanation. So... Uh, another game that's similar to Crazy House, in that it has piece dropping, is probably Shogi. So, most Shogi strategies do describe three phases. Joban, where you start and form your pieces for attack and defense. Chuban, when you initiate your attack and start exchanging pieces, hopefully to your advantage, you will try to converge where your opponent's king is, you judge the situation with the position of your pieces and also with the value pieces that are on the board and in hand. And Shuban, this is the phase when you will try to checkmate or brinkmate your opponent's king. The value of pieces at hand is not as important. Um, speed uh, to which you close in on your opponent's king is a top priority. Uh, rather, speed to which you close in on your opponent is a top priority. So, this is a, a good insight. Let's see, November 2016. Let's add a month and a half to that. This January 2017. So, month and a half. 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, four years, a month and a half ago, Unihedron made this beautiful insight. 
which I've been thinking about for about four years, um, trying to figure out how to implement in Stockfish. And eventually I just got flustered and said, you know, this is excellent, this is perfect, but I could never figure it out and gave up on it. Um, having studied Crazy House and Shogi in detail a bit more, I agree that the current game phase functionality works well. We don't need to introduce a third game phase. What I overlooked... Oh, I'm sorry, I gave up on this Yeah, October last year, about four years of effort. Um, what I overlooked at that time was that we don't really have two game phases. Um, Stockfish is really playing with a singular game phase where it adds up all the pieces on the board and in hand to determine the game phase. And this is why none of the tuning, none of anything has worked. Um, so separating out the pieces in hand from the pieces on the board when trying to assess the game phase probably will be in the spirit of what was indicated on Shogi Shack, or at the very least, um, I don't know. But geez, it's embarrassing just how badly I bungled that. Um, let's see, make clean. Where's the copy thing? So I got the timeout because we executed the build. We stopped the fish test worker. Or sorry, we restarted the fish test worker and then we tried to do the R sync and restart. Let's do this last part of the deploy. And come on. There we go. So we've deployed and restarted Godel. We are going to observe the worst ass kicking in Crazy House that we have seen in years. Um, so, 3 2, doesn't matter what color I get. Good luck. Um, not that you need it. But, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Assuming the code runs at all, it will kill me. It won't be a fair fight. Alright, this is stuck. No, it's not. It's just biding its time. Oh no. That's even worse. Uh, I mean, even with the whole neural network thing thrown in, like... There's no way I stand any chance whatsoever here. Um, so, uh, I think last year we observed my bot get kicked around very hard by Crazy ARA, which has neural network evaluation um, and weights and stuff like that. Um, Wait, did I run my test? Probably should just quickly run this test here. Yeah, minus four. That's correct. So... <sighs> That's great. I just look forward to seeing it do something so striking and innovative as to make me question, like, why I've ever tried to play this game. It doesn't have a pawn in hand yet. Yeah, so I saw it was going to try to chase down my bishop. Um, so, my bishops are already a bit awkward. It has no weaknesses at all. Like, I mean, arguably the b2 pawn is the weakness. And I can't hit that. If I start trying to put my pieces anywhere, they will hang. This bishop's already loose. If I put a bishop on e4 or f5, 
my entire position collapses. Um, so. Hmm. <laughs> um. How does my position collapse on bishop f5? Like it's. The one move that puts up the best res no bishop h7 is also considerable, or something I can consider. It's sad, um, but I'll take sad over losing. I will accept having a sad position. You want to learn coding? All right. Go learn coding. No, okay, I don't mean to be mad. Um, or mean. But, um, why do you want to learn coding? It sounds dreadful. Why would anybody want to do that? Wait. No way. Is this actually going to let me draw the game? Are the neural networks messed up that badly? That's funny. It's thinking. Please take my bishop. Please just let me have this draw. I need it. Wow. Okay. Uh. Uh. That's really weird. Okay. That indicates, uh, something. That's funny. How did I draw against Stockfish? I guess the neural network stuff really messed with it. Um, okay. I promise I didn't cheat. Uh, I know that like the standard chess neural networks are not optimal for crazy house play. But I wouldn't expect it to matter that much. Bishop takes f6, blunder. Bishop d3 was best. Fair enough. So. Okay, what was I going to go look at next? We're going to go hop on the box itself. Uh... Yeah. yeah, resources are free on the machine. It's not running out of resources. Okay. Um. There we go. Let's see, anti-chess rated disables the neural network. Every other version is using the neural network. Um, let's add to this crazy house. So for right now, um, we're going to disable use of neural, oh, whatever. Somebody challenged it to anti-chess. So next time I get to restart this bot, 
Um, yeah, right now we're going to observe uh, I just had to restart it. Uh, so, yeah, now if somebody's challenging it to a crazy house game, and it's rated. For the rated game, it won't use any of the neural network stuff. Uh, that's just going to be casual only for now. For either anti-chess or crazy house. Um, well, this person's not challenging it. So, their loss, my gain. Um... We're going to challenge it to a rated game. Good luck. You won't need it. Oh, are we suit? No, there's no way we could possibly repeat the game we just had. That would be too kind. So now it's evaluating. I mean, yes, using all my new code, but, um, if this fails, I might have to retune a ton of parameters. All right, I promise I'm not doing copycat on purpose. I'm just trying to avoid getting dunked on here. And it's really easy to get dunked on if I don't play some good defensive moves. I don't know what I just said, but what I was trying to say is that if I make poor moves, I will get dunked on. So... Yeah, I don't know where this knight on b8 belongs. It's not in a comfortable position at the moment. I'd like to remove this bishop. I might do this. This leads to other problems, but I might do it anyway. It might do like bishop drop h4 or g5 or e5 or a3. That's legal. Um, in some way kind of clever. In another way, this allows my knight to dance around a little bit. So... I don't quite understand it. Come on. You can do it. Is it just panicking somehow? Did I, like, miss a minus sign somewhere? And it's now just, like, misevaluating everything? Or is it building up for some clever attack that I should be foreseeing and I am completely failing to foresee? I need to build up a corpus of good test positions for Crazy House and see how the engine performs. Because testing one position over and over to see if I can get better and better results is not the best way to learn here. Um, I mean, it's super difficult to find good moves for me here. My position sucks, but I'm just human. Um, I 
This is my... What? I beg your... Oh, crap. Well, that's interesting. We're going to see some tactics here in a second. Because I just gave it a knight. Um, it might be very excited about getting this knight. It has to take my knight. There we go. And it really needs to bring this out. I'm guessing my latest patch is not the greatest. I thought my latest patch would be excellent, but it might be all the other things in Stockfish's evaluation might need to be retuned to accommodate this latest change. Um, okay, we need to defend these points. Also, bot, you need to move faster. Um... All right, that's exciting. Oh, okay. Wait, what's going on here? As much as I want to imagine that I might be some kind of shogi wiz oh, wizard genius, and just imagine that, like, somehow that all translates into crazy house skill, that could not possibly be the case. What? Okay. <laughs> no uh, I had such a good position oh no oh fuck <laughs> oh fuck 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 okay that's so funny Damn it. Okay. <laughs> well, that'll do it. Uh, well played. Gosh darn it. <sighs> Every time it wins at Crazy House, it's like this. Uh, that's not even fair. Uh... Was I ever better here? Just when I almost had a fair chance at beating it. Yeah, like, I had, like... Ah, <sighs> no. It says that it was winning the whole time. It's not even willing to admit that I was, like, completely dominating. Oh! I stand corrected. All right. So I just had to sack my rook here, and I would have had it. Damn. All right. Well, and that's assuming it's telling the truth here. Like, it's probably lying to me. It doesn't want me to know what its weakness is. But we'll figure it out. This is why we have tests. It's not fair. I had such a good game. I played one of my best crazy house games ever against an opponent that just reads, calculates super deep. It's not fair. Why do I make this bot if it just crushes me? <laughs> it's not. All right. Well, that was great. Uh, yeah, so, um, 
Anyway, when I wrote this comment, others, Vin Vin agreed with me. I now contradict my earlier comment in that Stockfish was just playing with one game phase until now. And now there might be some things where it might be overcompensating because all of its earlier bonuses that I added over and over and over again might have, um, I don't um, there's a saying, premature optimization is the root of all evil. But a performance game is worth it. So, yeah, the, if you look at the actual paper, uh, Kevlin Henney reminds us in this paper that the author... I don't remember who's the author's name, and this is terrible, but the conventional wisdom here is, yeah, Knuth. Knuth is the author of this paper. He emphasizes that right in the very next sentence that a 10% performance gain is always worth it, um, or worth considering. Um... But when I first coded Crazy House with Fabian, um, I made an optimization that uh, is an improvement for an untested amount. And I reasoned at the time, well, if it's not the right way to code this, uh, we could always come back and recode it later. And it'll be easy to see whether or not we've coded it wrong. But no, this just underscores in the most severe way that we really need to have good tests. And uh, I completely failed in that regard. And I mean, this is still a hobby project, completely uh, voluntary experimentation that, like, I expected other people to take some interest in hop aboard and do their own thing with it really it's just been fabian and myself for the most part there have been nobody else submitting patches or i don't know there has been feedback forum uh information so people have provided feedback about like if they find the bot doing strange things or if they find a game analysis not operating correctly but, yeah, this experiment has been uh, a duo project between myself and Fabian. And he uh, tires of me constantly breaking his stuff. Uh, he's very helpful. Uh, but he's also right that we need to like do better testing. But I'm perpetually just very excited about having so many ideas and I'm very not responsible in producing an uber testing framework even though I put tons of effort into writing modules that do testing I never completed any of them I've made significant progress but it's just always too much for me to bring a project to completion um, for this kind of unpaid effort so even if like there's no way i could get paid the amount that would make sense for me to just focus enough on this to make it very good so it's always in this half done state which sucks mm -hmm. but um i am impressed what other people can produce so what else can i say um, yeah, so there we've introduced P hand, which is how we should have coded this the first time. And maybe we did code it this way the first time and I just broke it. And that's probably what happened. Because I got excited about the possibility of like abstracting this to 
to handle a much wider uh well to handle honestly some of the sorts of things that Fabian's been working on but also like you have variants like three check where you have pieces in hand or atomic with pieces in hand and stuff like that never got around to implementing that um so um yeah this this short simple code block is how i should have coded this the first time and maybe it was at one point coded this way and now it's come back but this is the right way to code this it's at least simple it has that merit but because uh i had miscoded this the first time and made all these other crazy house formula bonuses that tried to work around the fact that I coded this wrong. Um, now we have a working game phase detector that detects like, okay, so fine, here we've gotten this position where I'm about to drop my queen. We're no longer in the opening phase. Uh, if you were to ask Stockfish right now, what's the game phase? Stockfish, not my latest patch, but the one that's on the server here, the one that's running in the browser and such, would tell you, well, we are going to sum up all the pieces on the board and sum up all the pieces in hand. Hey, check that out. That's all 32 pieces. We must still be in the opening. Um, what I just coded today is going to say, well, this doesn't look like an opening anymore. And so now that we're going to correctly compute the game phase, all the bonuses, which were based on very slight variations of game phase, now need to be retuned, recomputed, etc. Um, so I suspect that the patch I just submitted here is going to fail and going to crash and burn and it's going to be horrible and I don't know what we're going to do. I'll have to retune a bunch of weights to see if I can get this to improve any. Um, or I could just like divide all the current bonuses by two or four or eight or something and see can I get some variation of this thing to pass. Um, Maybe I can. I don't know. But yeah, all this code is tremendously complex at this point. Simplifying it is going to be a mess. So, because I just, um, this was way too complicated. It didn't need to be this complicated. So what do I do? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Sucks. But yeah, you note that I took this one operation that got performed every time a capture occurs. Every capture we would increment or decrement the value of this score for the position. And now the position score is not tied to pieces in hand anymore. Not directly. But we compute this pieces in hand bonus later. And because we do that, we're having to recount how many pieces are in hand every single time and multiply that and recompute the score. Um, so we have one for loop that executes um, every time we want to get the position evaluation. So this was premature optimization here where I'm saying, hey, I can save us from having to do a for loop later by caching this piece square thing. And honestly, um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, now this, uh, what I've done so far here, separating this out of PSQ is correct. But, um, this probably doesn't perform well. And if I want this to perform better, what I should do is take this, reinstate this line of code, 
and have there be a member inside the position class that does the same thing as this, but just don't call it PSQ. That's the more performant way to do this and further reduces the amount of code that we have to write. So let's do it. Gosh darn it. I should have coded it this way from the outset. That's the... That's what I... Uh, Roo? Uh, is Roo actually appropriate in this context? I don't know. But fine. But we're going to call that P hand. Uh, so we'll say we have def crazy house. We're going to have this member P hand. There we go. And uh whoops. Add two hand is declared down here. We're gonna put this line of code back. Except instead of calling it PSQ, call it P hand. There we go. So we add to P hand, we subtract from P hand. Now you might say, hang on a second. Um, we don't have this square none. We don't have any of this other uh, stuff. Where'd it go? Here we go. So you're probably thinking, hang on. Uh, the way we evaluate um, a piece no longer uses that long, complicated expression. Um, but just needs, wow. Wow, this got so much simpler. Dear God. All right. I'm making earlier me look like such an idiot, but that's not such a hard task, is it? Uh, PSQ score in hand. All right. Um, which is also a terrible name. All right, good God. Can I get anything right, I wonder? Oh, hang on. Yeah, P hand. That's all it is. Um, now, do I want to have a separate... I need to have a separate value per white and per black. That's the dilemma here. Um, so, yeah, we're going to declare this um, as a two dimensional array. Oh, okay, so on the left side here, we need to keep track of the color. Oh, that wasn't so hard. Um, so, yeah, let's do it that way. Now we have a method name that makes sense, or function declaration. Hang on. Uh, in hand score. He hand score. Player hand score. There we go. Oh, P square table score is what PSQ stands for. P hand is uh, piece hand. Fine, whatever. As long as it's something I can understand. Um, is 
Is there anything else I need to do here? Yeah, so we hand score plus Can we verify? Yeah, we have our test here. Let's rerun the test. No clean. Just to make sure that we have a nice sane build with all the arrays of identical dimension. We're going to submit this thing again when I'm being less of a dumb dumb. Um, so our branch name is still out here somewhere. Yeah, this is the name of the branch, Crazy House Phase No Neural Network. It's going to compete against no effectively updatable neural network. It's going to be a bug fix or a simplification. There's our minus four eval. Where's, okay, whatever. Let's do this again. At the head of my output here, if I can find it, next to this, yeah, reference bench. It's for standard chess. Get log as our commit message. There we go. And we need to push my code changes up to GitHub one more time. Git rebase, no neural network, git push force. That's better. And now do we declare victory? Uh, make it clean and we'll deploy the change up to um, Godel as well. Unable to locate branch. That's too bad. Alright, there's our commit message. Crazy house phase no neural network. Compare with no neural network simplification. Crazy house uh, branch name. There, that's our branch name. That's not our. Where is our bench number? Where'd it go? Here it is. A reference bench for standard chess. For parity with the upstream chess code is that magic number. There we go. Our branch is, or should now be found. And we're doing some optimization. Um, there we go. Good God, this took forever. But... It'll be deployed soon. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, I hear you stay healthy, bot. We're actually going to take a break very soon. This, which I expected to be a five-minute demonstration, has ended up being so, so much more. Um, this is one hell of a regression test. It's your move, buddy. Show me what you got. Or don't. It's 
so I'm debating which direction do I want to castle, because I've already exposed my king. I'm also curious, like, there are a lot of places that bishop could drop. It's scary seeing it in hand. Whereas my bishop does not have a lot of places that it can drop. Uh, interesting. Are we agreeing to a draw here, Stockfish? Please let me get away with the draw. I need the rating points. Uh, we're not getting our draw. All right, fine. Oh. Okay, I guess we're castling queenside then. Which allows us to pile up on this slit. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. All my chances lie in checkmating it before it can figure out what's going on. Uh, which does not sound very probable. Alright. Oh, I was going to take that bishop next. I was going to highlight that with an arrow and show this is the move that I very much want to play next. Um, Stockfish can read my mind. That's a bit unnerving. So now it costs me a pawn if I want to exchange material. Or it costs me this tempo. Um, right, I'm trying to keep the edge file closed. Because if and when this opens, I am fucked. Um, all right. Really? Oh, okay. My plan was to retreat here. It's just teasing me. All right, free pawn. What could possibly go wrong if I take this free pawn? Which is doubtless entirely free of any consequence. All right, um, that's embarrassing. Um, yeah, I've just lost here. Well played. Damn. All right, well, it works. Um, did I have any chance at all this game? Maybe before I played bishop e3. When I played that, it's kind of ended. That's a lightning fast evaluation of the entire game. Um, knight, or bishop at f3 was Oh, I don't know if I trust this, but apparently bishop drop at f3 was terrible, and knight f3 was best. Um, yeah, I've got some issues to work out here. But, we still see that at least it's performing over my rating. Over my measly 2,000-something rating here. Is that 2007 or 2000 something else? Oh, 2001 now. Beautiful. All right. So it's at least maintaining its rating, um, despite blunders. Yeah, that's so weird. Why would it make a blunder?
I mean, I was a little surprised. What else is going on here? Okay, so bishop retreating to b3 apparently is a blunder. This apparently is best for some reason. This actually is beautiful. Yeah, I should have done this. So I think what this just means is that I'm overrated. Uh, my bot's going to lose some rating points this week. It's going to lose a lot of rating points while I go fix other stuff with it. Um, but I think my simplification, however many rating points it might end up losing in the short term, will make it possible to retune and rebuild and strengthen it in the future. Um, but yeah, good God. This was sad. Um, and, like, it's such a simple code change at the end. We've taken this thing where we had this square nun affixed at the end of an array, and we don't need that anymore. Um... So all the stuff I did to re-dimension the piece square table array just to add on this square that's not even part of the board. Um, it was just a optimization that really didn't need to be done. So, um, who was it? Was it... No, uh, it was Bob Martin, Uncle Bob, Robert C. Martin who mentioned that um, if you don't have performance requirements, don't do optimization. Um, or don't stress about optimizing things. When I had done this initial coding, I had stressed about trying to tune this for performance. I had some very loose requirements, but I did not have a hard requirement that this had to perform in any way. If I had a requirement, I could have defined the test. If I had a test, I could have seen that extending the dimension of this here table is um, not the way to go. But since I didn't have the right tests in place, uh, consequently... Like, this code just got... I haven't even shown you the disgusting code. There's just way too much of it. Uh, you don't want to see it. You will see it. You will see me removing and retuning and fixing a whole bunch of stuff. This is only the tip of the iceberg here. Um, and that's sad, because Stockfish is the number two crazy house engine out there crazy ARA um, is number one um, but this is it was a very strong number two and it's still riddled with problems because I didn't put proper tests in place the first time around and I tried to golf it for performance because I had some loose expectations about what the performance of the application needed to be. And based on having loose expectations, I was loose about my testing. So that's the moral of the story. Um, I'm still flustered with myself about it, but, you know, it'll get better. I have to somehow set that aside, get over it, and um, what's going to be following here, um, can I bring up my code? <sighs> what's going to be following is me retuning some of this stuff in evaluate.cpp. Um, so I could show some of this here. Oh yes, yeah, so the lazy evaluation threshold doesn't work for 
uh, handling positions where there's an overwhelming display of force. There's all these king attack weights that are so different than the king attack weights for standard chess. There's king danger parameters that are very different than standard chess. There's all these other tables of values that widely differ. And probably any or all of these values are wrong and need to be retuned based on this new definition of game phase. I don't even know how I go about identifying which ones are the most wrong. But, um... So, the way we'll know if some of these have to be fixed is if um, my test fails, as I expect it unfortunately might. Um, wow, well, alright, so let's search for... Yeah, if this thing here fails, I'll have to go uh, run some games and see what's so bad about this. But also, thankfully, uh, I won't be the only person playing this bot. But even if I am, um, yeah, I could take, uh, I could calm down long enough to look at some of these examples and see uh, where did it make a blunder. Well, the first blunder it made this game was bishop takes bishop. So then I can put this into the engine, this position and ask, um, what's the best move engine? And if it suggests bishop takes bishop, then I can look into, well, why is it suggesting that? What are all the factors causing this decision? If I aggregate enough of these blunders, uh, eventually we'll figure out um, what's causing the eval function to spike. So, it still beat me. It's still a very strong engine, but it could be a lot better. So, things can only improve, despite this being the world's number two crazy house engine. It, it can only improve from here. I mean, I've broken it to the, uh, my latest patch, which I don't think is going to pass here, but we have to test it if it passes this test then we need to long run a slower time control patch here and see whether it passes that too. Um, actually, let's go over here. Submit this with a priority of one. Because I'm going to be doing more and more coding and testing and stuff, and we'll see whether or not I can fix this. But yeah, it'd be nice to see this bot get a rating of 3,000 instead of 2,000-something. So is 3,000 the ceiling for this? I don't know. But um, yeah, right now it's even on a one CPU machine, it should be doing so much better. It should be on par with Crazy ARA, I would hope. We'll find out. So... Yeah, it's almost midnight. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.